Today we're going to take a winch and make it portable. We're going to install a hitch on it, make a custom plate for it, make sure you can swivel it and pull from any direction whatsoever, make sure you can chain it to a tree and pull. We're going to install a synthetic rope on it. It's going to be a fun project. Keep watching. So this is my little 2,000, 2,500 pound. You can buy these everywhere for about, you know, sub $75. Little ATV winch. And I use it all the time for kind of more of a, an electric come along. I, here we go. I mounted this little chain to it so I can actually just wrap it around and hook it around anything, trees, and then pull from a tree to something. So I throw this on the bed of my trailer and I have a little bar at the top, just the regular trailer rails, and I can just wrap this around those and cinch it up wherever I want. I can wrap it around, you know, the hitch of a, I can just set it there and I can just wrap this chain around the hitch of a truck or something and pull from the hitch of the truck. And it's coming really handy, except for, as you can see, it's really floppy. The chain is really floppy and when you do hook it up, the first thing it wants to do is fall until it gets tension and then it comes up. So I'm actually going to mount it permanently to a receiver hitch. And so I can slide it in the hitch of a truck still. I can still mount a chain to it if I want, but I want to be able to just slide it in the truck and pull. But I want to go one more step. I don't want to be able to, you know, if this is slid into the bumper of the truck, um, I have receiver hitches in the front and the rear of my truck. I don't want to just be able to pull straight straight because inevitably you're always pulling at an angle and if you've used a winch you know how much they just birds nest on one side and it just craps everything up pulls on the fair lead extremely hard just ruins the rope and everything else i want it to be able to pivot so i can actually pull sideways at any angle and along with that i figured i was also going to swap out the uh the steel cordage that i've been using for years it's still in great shape but i figured why not Let's actually switch it out and, and go with some lightweight fiber cording, whatever you want to call it, the, the synthetic rope that weighs, it weighs nothing. So I'm going to put this on as well, and in doing that I have to actually change out the fair lead and stuff like that. So we're going to make a whole new base plate. This plate's going to go bye-bye. So I have a random piece of quarter inch, six mil diamond plate steel just sitting here that I'm not going to use for anything else. I figured that would be perfect for this. Um, I'm going to actually use it the bottom side since it's flat. So we got it all sketched out here. We need this much steel. I'm just, probably This is just scrap. I'm going to cut that piece off. But first I want to drill holes before I start cutting stuff down. The winch mounts right here with its original two bolt holes. So the winch is going to mount there. I'm going to cut two slits here. Um, this piece is going to stay flat and there's just going to be a big old hole drilled here so that you can hook a hook back through it. And then these two little ears are going to bend up straight and this fair lead is going to mount to it. We're going to have a big one inch hole back here. Switch over to a twist drill bit for these small, small little holes. If you've never used a mag drill before, I have a whole video on it, but there's a magnet on the back. There's a switch on the back that turns it into a, an electromagnet, and you turn that off at any point. You know, So it works just as good as a drill press, but it's portable and you can use these special cutters. You can use these annular cutters that, that a drill press can't, and they just cut way quicker than a drill press ever could on large, huge holes. And I've showed this trick before to clean up your mess. You take some magnets, take an old soda bottle, cut a little slit, just a quarter of the way through or so, slide it in, seal it all up. And you take up all of your shavings, and then the magnets, since they're they're in there, and you can shake them. You shake it over the garbage, and everything just falls right off. So you pick up all your cuttings. So now I need to cut two slits right here and here. 
so I can bend these up. And I'm going to use this. It's the, uh, the Evolution Metal Cutting Circular Saw. It's more than just like a circular saw. It's actually designed and engineered just to cut metal. So we're just going to go in and cut through this, uh, you know, this quarter inch, six, seven millimeter plate. One of the nice things about this saw is there's actually, I don't know if you guys can see, there's actually a clear viewing window. So there's actually a piece of glass on this side where normally with a circular saw, I'd have to bend over and watch that edge of that blade. But they got it pretty well shielded here to keep any metal chips and stuff. But from this side, I can actually see right down in there and see exactly what it's doing. Feels exactly like you're cutting a piece of wood. I'm not kidding. Now I gotta bend these tabs up and if I want a nice straight bend, one of the best techniques is to actually score it. So I'm gonna take this circular saw I'm gonna go about halfway depth through and just score this little tab and this little tab, bend them down and then I can re-weld to strengthen it back up. So these are all bent up nice. They line up good with my Fairlead bolts. And they are at the right height to mount up. You know, this is gonna be, this lines up with the bottom where it spools around. So that's all good. I ended up cutting off the back piece right here with the saw. And then I cut off the two little corners right here and I'll use those as gussets down on each side of this. Well, that really didn't remove much material. I haven't even touched the outside edge where it wasn't tapered. There we go. That did it. Because this did have steel cable on it before, this is all aluminum, but it feels pretty smooth, but I did run a file across it and some fine sandpaper just to make sure it all felt super smooth. I don't know if you guys can see this, a lot of people don't know this, but the more wraps you get on a winch, because the larger, you know, it makes, so it, you essentially get a larger and larger and larger diameter, let's say, call it a pulley, the less you can actually pull. So with one wrap, I can pull 2,000. Two wraps, I dropped a 1630. You know, we get like four wraps on there, five wraps on there, and we're down to 1,000 pounds. Six wraps, I'm down to 940. You fill this whole thing up where it had a 2,000 pound. Originally, you're, you're at 900, 800 pounds is all you can pull straight. So that's another thing to consider and why I usually like to use a snatch block is because I can take out as much cable as I need. You always want to take out as, as more than you need. You know, you always want to get it down to where you only have a few, you know, one wrap on the spool so you get the maximum pulling force with the least amount of work to your motor. Everything seems to be 
functioning and working just like I should. Um, the motor on some of my hitches ends up hitting when I go all the way one direction. That shouldn't be an issue because there's no reason why I can't run it upside down. There's absolutely no reason why it will still pull in the exact same way so I can run it upside down if I have to. So one thing I am noticing about my design that I didn't have the issue when I had the chain hooked to it because the chain, when I had the chain hooked out here, the pivot point was, you know, six to 12 inches behind. So this really didn't have a chance to rock. Right now, when I have the pivot point right here, it can actually rock. It's very close to the spool. And so when I wind it in with the load, let's put it center and I'll put a fair amount of tension on it. See, I want to kind of cock over and pull this straight with the uh, line itself straight up with the pivot point. And it does the same thing over here. So it kind of wants to burn this over the side. So I may have put the pivot point too close. I may, I'll try it out, but I may have to weld that piece that I cut off the back of here, put it, you know, another, I think even another four, five, six inches out, four inches, and put the pivot point back here so it's a little bit longer. But that will probably allow me to, um, it won't, it won't shift as easily because the pivot point is so far back, if that makes sense. So I've decided to take it all apart and take that piece that I cut off and actually drill another hole. And I'm actually just going to weld that on. And that extends the length, the, the point about six inches. Shouldn't it have mattered if I was actually using a snatch block because a snatch block would have held on to here and held it straight. But might as well just do it once and be done with it so it doesn't give me any problem in the future. So I'm going to just lap weld this top and bottom. There we go. Got a lap weld. Got an overlap in about three quarters of an inch. Plenty of lap weld there. Plenty there. So, so here's a finished product. We got it all mounted up. I decided to re-drill two new holes and then reinstall the chain because it was so handy to be able to wrap this around a tree and stuff. And so you can just you can attach it to whatever you want behind. So that that'll just that chain will just sit on there. No big deal. It'll still mount to the hitch. The hitch will fold completely up under. You can swivel it any direction. We got our front mount up here for using the um, the snatch block. So you can double the pulling power. So you can take 2,000 pounds and turn it into 4,000. So I figured let's run it out and try pulling something directly from the side. I guess I didn't really show you guys the winch setup. It's just a standard winch, and then they give you a little controller, and I just have the wires taped off nicely. And then generally, I just clip it to a battery. You can clip it to the car's battery. Just have little alligator clips on here, and I just take along a small little battery or a little jump pack, and that's how I'm able to use it on like a trailer or anywhere else. And I mean, you can run it for a long time off just one of these, or you can hook it to the vehicle's battery if that's accessible. I guess you could run jumper cables if these cables weren't long enough, but that's all I ever do. I even have a hitch on the back of my riding mower so I can slide it in there, pin it up, tuck it away, hook it to the riding mower's battery. I have a hitch on the front of my truck. Slide it in, pull from anywhere. If I want to pull something towards this tree, I don't even need to use the hitch, I can just use the chain. Let me just chain it around this tree and then I can pull whatever I want towards this tree. I'll put a link to all the tools that I used in the job, like the Evolution Circular Saw, which is one of my new favorite tools, along with Evolution Mag Drill, both awesome tools. I have a whole video on that. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. See you guys soon. Bye. Winch safety, okay? You never jump, you never cross this line right here. You see this? Come here. You never jump over these lines. Oh, no, you don't do that. Come here. What about crawling under? Can you crawl under it? What about jumping? You're crawling. I jump in. I crawl. In. Oh yeah? What about driving the faster? You wanna say goodbye to everybody? You wanna tell everybody goodbye? No? Okay, let's go.